Thy apostle, may I pray. And that's what the Lord also said. And you're running the disciples. Did you know they had families? Did you know the disciples had jobs? Did you know how the disciples had lives? But they laid it down. Just like the prophets. The prophets, some of them had successful jobs. Some of them were successful businessmen or successful shepherds. And they had to lay it down and follow God. We're going to talk about Elisha. And they even said, let's the Lord, we gave up everything for you. We gave up everything for the cross. We gave up everything for you. And the Lord said, that's why the Lord said to you, the kingdom. And that's what God says today. That's what Jesus said today. For those that lay everything at the cross, lay down not just your sorrow, but your joy. Lay down not just your mountain, but your love. Lay down not just, not just your misery, but your hopes. God said to you belongs the kingdom. So rejoice because it said your name is written in the land book of life. Don't even rejoice when you see Satan get destroyed. Don't even rejoice when Satan comes down. Don't even rejoice when the demons are rebuked and they flee. But you just rejoice that God is with you. That God is with you and God will give you joy. It's like what it says in the song. The joy of the Lord is my strength. And that's what he's saying. The joy of the Lord. And it's not only just your joy, but making God happy. And that's what Jesus did. When God said, I am well pleased with you, he hugged, I believe that he hugged Jesus, that the Spirit hugged him and let him know that he was his uh, son. And that's what God does, because that's what God does when you walk in the Spirit. And when you walk in the Spirit, I said, and walking in the Spirit is just, it comes naturally when you pray and praise and when you read the Word of God. It comes naturally. You're like you could just out of nowhere, you'd be given visions, and you just God just speak with you while you're walking around, and He hugs you and He tell you, "Well done, good and faithful servant. Well done." This and that's how you know you walk in the Spirit because God talks automatically to you. You can hear Him. Your faith helps you to hear Him and helps you and comforts you, and you feel His anointing on your heart and on your innermost being, and you feel. The power of the Holy Ghost, it's like fire about you. Like Jeremiah said, like fire shut up in my bone. And that's what God wants you to rejoice on, that he's with you. Those are that's when you hear him, when he gives you vision and dreams, when he speaks to you, when he's burning on you, when you feel his anointing, when, he, when you feel his power. He is with you and you are not alone. So you got to shrug off that selfishness. Because the devil try to bring in substance where he's saying, oh, I wish I had this. This is more important than anything. And even when people do pass away, some people be like, oh, I, I'd rather have them than anything else. No, you should say that about God. Because the Lord said, heaven and earth will pass away, but my word will remain. So if you have God on your side, you have everything you need to survive. You have everything you need to overcome. You have everything you need to conquer. It's all in Jesus, in the name of Jesus. And that's why we got to lay it at the cross. Because Jesus, I said, Jesus already paid for it. He already paid for your healing. He already paid for your restitution. He already paid for your restoration. The Lord paid for everything that you need to accomplish what you need to accomplish. And, and that's what he said. That's why Jesus did say, let that very day. He was saying, you cannot continually mound over the dead. You cannot continue to weep. You cannot continue. That is not going to accomplish anything. You got to be encouraged and you got to trust God and you got to ask God to say, God, give me courage. God, give me strength. And so pray that until it becomes a praise. And then you'd be saying, God, give me courage. God, give me strength. And so that's what even in the Jewish tradition, that's what they would do. They would pray so much that it becomes a song, that their prayers and song, you couldn't tell if it was a prayer or a song, because they will pray so much that they remember and repeat it so much that they start singing it. And that's what the Lord said, pray so much that it becomes your praise. And when God answers you, the beginners to testify about it and to give him glory. He said, because that's why the Lord said he promised He'll never leave you. He'll never forsake you. And he also promised, weep and endure for a night, but joy come in the morning. And that's what David said. Weep and endure for a night, saying, God, oh, yeah, 
The devil may get you weeping sometimes, but that don't mean that you're being torn out because sometimes weeping strengthens you. God is strengthening you. And that's what he is. The Lord is strengthening you. Jesus wept before he went on the cross. He wept. I said, but he laid it down and the Lord strengthened him. The Lord strengthened him and gave him enough strength to go through what he needed to do and then encourage them and build him up. I said, and that's what he got to do for us. The Lord has to strengthen us. And we got to do what Jesus did. In our distress, we got to cry out and lay it down at the cross. And that's what he said. And when you know you lay it down at the cross, you could easily say, not my will, but yours be done. Not my will, but yours be done. Not my will, but yours be done. That's how you know you truly laid it. When you do that every day and every time the enemy attacks you, you bind the enemy and say, in the name of Jesus. In the name, I speak in the name of Jesus. I bind in the name of Jesus. And you tell that memory, I bind in the name of Jesus, I speak in the name of Jesus. You tell weeping, I bind in the name of Jesus, I speak in the name of Jesus. And he said, no weapon for and against you shall prosper. And every tongue that rises up against you shall be condemned. So that's how you know you're laying it at the cross. When you rebuke, bind, and you stand on the scripture that's giving you the promise of God. 